Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I'm going to give you some examples of how I use workflow automation in pipe drive to automate my sales process. Now, if you've never used workflow automation before, I would suggest pausing this video and I'm going to link up here a video that I created showing you how to get started with workflow automation. Check that out first and then come back to this video. Now, I know that getting started with workflow automation can be a bit tricky because sometimes if you've never worked with automations before, you're not really sure what's even possible or where to start. So this video is really intended for people who are sort of looking for ideas in terms of what could I automate to streamline my sales process. If you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one support with setting up or optimizing your Pipedrive account, maybe improving the adoption of your team or automating more of your sales process, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Pipedrive support options. The first automation I'd like to show you, this one here, I call deal lost, no show, send email. So in my sales process, potential clients book an introductory call with me where I can learn more about their requirements and I can share more about how we work. And sometimes people book the call and they don't show up to the appointment, which can be pretty frustrating. And just a little uh, tip that I recommend when you name your automations, I, I name my automations uh, a bit like this where I say, what's the trigger or how does this automation start? So in my case, I have to deal, uh, lose a deal and specify the no-show lost reason. I do a little arrow and then I say, what is it that this automation does? So I send an email. So in this automation, you can, you can pause the video if you want to look at the exact steps that I've set up here. I've used the deal updated trigger and then I have some conditions here where I only want this email to be sent first if the deal status has changed to lost, if the lost reason has changed to no show, because I have set lost reasons and no show is one of them, and if the label on the deal is not, do not contact. Sometimes I will decide, you know, I don't want to send this email for whatever reason, so I use that label as a way of preventing this email from being sent if I don't want to send it. So if those conditions are satisfied, if I've lost the reason because of the no-show lost reason, I send an email to the contact person on the deal using my no-show template, which if I go to my templates here, this is an example of what it says. It's going to say, where to from here, name. So it says, hi, name. You reached out and booked a time to chat with me. I was waiting on Zoom, but you didn't show. How should we proceed from here? Really simple little sales email I like to send, just, you know, the ball's in your court. Do you want to rebook? Are you serious? And so I, this, this email automatically gets sent. And so the uh, email is going to be linked and associated with the organization and contact person on the deal. Now, I've specified do not use an email signature because I've got my name in the actual email itself and I don't want my signature being added to the bottom. And I've chosen to enable open and click tracking. So there we go. That's a really simple little automation. It just means that if I lose a deal because the person didn't show up for their appointment, I can automate this email and I don't have to manually send that. Next, I'm going to show you a couple of automations that all kind of work together. So the first is this one here. When a deal is created in the prospect stage, the automation creates follow up activities. So first, my, my trigger is a deal being created and I have a condition, this automation only runs if the stage is prospect. I then update, uh, this is an interesting step, I, I update the person, um, but I actually don't do anything here. What, what this automation, what this step is doing is it's actually updating the person with their name. So technically, I already have their name, so when this update person, update name step happens, nothing actually happens, I'm just updating their name with their name. But putting this action in there gives me access to the labels um, on the contact. And because I have some separate automation running, I'm not going to get into the details of that. I basically need to check that the person does not have one of these inquiry labels, which get applied through some separate automation that I have in place. So that's kind of specific to me. But essentially what this automation then does is it creates an activity, an email follow-up activity, um, due the same day, and this gets marked as done straight away, and this is assigned to the creator of the deal. So what I'm actually doing in this step is just logging that we sent an email. So usually we do this because somebody's reached out to me, we've responded and said, hey, 
please book an introductory call here. And this is just logging the fact that we sent that email. The real beneficial part of this automation is this next step. So what happens here is another activity is created, email follow-up book intro call. This is due in two days. And this gets assigned to Faith, who's my assistant. And I've actually put some notes down here. We use Text Expander for some of our templates that aren't in Pipedrive. Um, she, she works out of my Gmail account. So she gets an activity to follow up using a Text Expander uh, snippet. And um, that's assigned to her. <clears throat> she needs to do that in two days. So essentially, she just has an activity to follow up. So that's the first automation. So let me show you that in action so you can see how that actually works. So I will create a deal. I'm just going to use Warwick on my team as the uh, contact here. And so I'm going to create a deal in the prospect stage. That's one of my criteria. So I'm just going to click Save. So the deal gets created. And if you watch what happens, firstly, you can see that email activity has been logged and marked as complete immediately because we've now sent an email saying, please book your call. That happens separately outside of Pipedrive. And you can see this activity here is due in two days, and this is assigned to Faith on my team. So that's the first automation. Next, I use this automation, email follow-up activity complete, create final follow-up activity. So this one is triggered when an activity is updated. And if the activity subject, let me edit in here, if the activity subject is email follow-up book intro call, which as you can see, is the activity that got created in the previous automation. So if an activity with that subject is marked as done, the, this automation then creates another activity called email follow-up, final follow-up. And this is due in five days. So watch what happens. If I mark this activity as complete, I'll cancel that pop-up. This activity to do a final follow-up is then created. And so again, that goes to Faith on my team. She knows to use this other um, template. Once we're happy, once we've done that follow-up, let's go to my final automation in this sequence, which is this one here. So similar to before, when an activity is updated, and this time, if the activity subject is final follow-up, is marked as complete. And if, it, if the deal is still in that prospect stage, because we haven't booked them on a call. We haven't moved them to meeting a range. So as long as we're still in that stage, the, basically the person hasn't responded at this point. So if that happens, we then lose the deal. So we mark the deal as lost and we specify the lost reason as didn't book introductory call. So watch what happens. Mark that as done. Let me just cancel the pop-up again. The deal has been lost and the lost reason didn't book intro call has been applied. So those three automations all work together to basically tell my assistant Faith when she needs to follow up so that she can get the prospect to book a call with me. And this is really handy because I actually spoke on my podcast recently. I've just hired my new assistant and I really want her to follow a consistent process every single time. I also don't want her to have to remember you know, when to follow up with people. So we can use the automations so she can log in every day and she can look into her activities and see which follow-ups she needs to send. The next automation I'd like to share is one that I use to create a renewal deal after I sell a subscription. And I actually spoke about this recently in another video uh, around how to manage renewals in Pipedrive, which I'll link up here. So I sell Pipedrive subscriptions on an annual basis. And when I sell a subscription and I win a deal, I need to create a renewal deal that reminds me to follow up and discuss their renewal in 11 months time. So I've created this automation, which is triggered when a deal is updated. And I have conditions here where, when the status of the deal has changed to one, but only for deals on my Pipedrive subscriptions pipeline, and if the subscription type is new. If it's an existing subscription, we have slightly different process. What I then do is I change the label on the organization. This is just something I use to de denote what type of customer this is. I create an activity on the exist on the current deal. I need to check some details on my side. I also create another activity to update update the subscription details in Pipedrive. Then I duplicate my existing deal and I move that duplicated deal to a new pipeline um, and I put it into the up, uh, or sorry, I do I put it back to the first stage of the pipeline into the upcoming renewal stage.
and this is expected to be closed in one year. And then finally, I create an activity, an email follow-up activity that's due in 11 months that tells me to follow up with this person. So let me show you that in, in practice. So let's say I have this subscription deal and I'm actually in the, the final stages here. Let me just fill in some of these um, required fields and let's go subscription. There we go, just get those required fields out of the way. So I'm in this final stage and then I mark the deal as one. Oh, I have one more required field to fill in. Let's do that. So I've marked this subscription deal as one. You can see now a couple of activities have been created on this deal, some updates I need to do on this deal. And if I go to my contact, Warwick Palm, you can see a brand new deal has been created, which is due a year from now, 21st of Feb 25. And I have an activity to contact Warwick in 11 months to discuss this renewal. This is another really handy automation because it's a great way of building a bit of a checklist into our system. So when we win that subscription deal, we have to complete a couple of activities. And of course, I don't want to forget about that renewal in 11 months time. Here's an automation I use in a situation where, let's say somebody comes to me and they say, I'd like some help with Asana. At that point in time, I will have a deal in progress where I'm trying to sell my Asana consulting services. And then on the discovery call, they might say, oh, we'd love it if you could also send us a quote for our actual Asana subscription. In that situation, I now need to create a new deal. I have one deal for the consulting revenue that I'm trying to generate, and I need to create a brand new deal for the uh, subscription revenue that I'm hoping to generate. So there's two different deals for the two services that we offer. What I do with this automation is when a deal is updated, and I add the bundle label, and as long as the title contains Asana, this automation is then gonna run. So adding the, the label, this bundle label, is sort of the trigger that I use. I apply the label and then that runs the automation. The automation then creates a brand new deal with the organization name and Asana subscription as the title. And it puts this onto, my, uh, onto a different pipeline, my Asana subscriptions pipeline. And it creates an activity for me to create a quote because now I need to send them a quote. So let me show you that in progress. Here's a deal on my consulting pipeline. I'm trying to sell my consulting services. And then I add the bundle label and I just call it a bundle because they're buying a bundle of services. So now if I go to Warwick Palm, you can see there's this new deal has been created for their Asana subscription and I have an activity to create a quote. This is a great time saver because it means that rather than having to manually go back out, create the deal, create the activity, adding that one label, label saves me a number of steps. Here's an automation I use to automatically rename activities so they appear nicely on my Google Calendar. So this one, when a call, is, a call scheduled activity is created, it renames the activity to include the person's name. So the trigger is simply an activity being created and this automation only runs for calls being scheduled. I do have a normal call activity. Call scheduled is an activity I use where I've planned to call somebody at a specific time and these activity types sync onto my Google Calendar so I can see these booked calls. And then really simply, the automation just renames the activity to call colon and then puts in the person's name. And that just means when it goes onto my Google Calendar, I can see their name. So here's an example. If I create the call scheduled activity, let's say I'm gonna to call today 11 to 11.15. Watch what happens, this is gonna run quite quickly. I hit save, call scheduled, call Warwick Palm. So now this is on my Google Calendar and I can see the person's name. And that way I could, I've just got nice, clean, organized activities that show up on my calendar. Here's an automation I use to automatically update custom fields on my deal. And again, this one is quite specific to me. But when I change the title of a deal and I add the word Zapier to that deal title, it updates my contractor and revenue model custom fields. So I've used the deal updated trigger. And if the deal title contains Zapier and the deal title has changed, so I've changed it and added Zapier, then I update the deal and I change the revenue model to a consulting project and I add Warwick as the contractor. Warwick is my Zapier expert. He's the one that always works on my Zapier jobs. So another example, let's say I've got minor workshop here and you can see the contractor and revenue model. Actually, let's remove revenue model just for the sake of this example. So those are currently empty. 
and I add the word Zapier. I usually do this after a meeting. Right, they want help with Zapier. I update the deal title, and then you can see those revenue model and contractor fields are both filled in. So again, it's just a very small thing that removes a step, and it means that I don't have to remember to do that. As long as I update the title, those fields will get filled in. Here's another simple automation I use to really systemize our process. This one again is related to our subscription revenue. So if I move a deal to the ready to proceed stage in my Asana subscriptions pipeline, the automation creates some activities. So again, I've used the deal updated trigger and I have a condition where this automation will run when I move the deal or the deal stage has changed to ready to proceed. Then I create an activity to send our resale form, send our reseller agreement and to register the deal. So it's just a great way of creating a simple checklist of the next steps that we need to take. So here's a deal currently in confirmed interest. I move it to quote sent. Oh no, sorry, we're doing it off ready to proceed. There we go, let's go ready to proceed. I need to fill in my uh, required field. And there we go, three activities just got created. This is the checklist I need to now go and complete. Again, this just saves me a couple of steps. I don't have to create these activity, but more importantly than that, it actually tells me what I now need to do. This is great if you're onboarding new salespeople or employees and you need them to follow certain steps. And again, you don't want them to have to remember. This automation takes care of all of that for me. And the final automation I'd like to show you here is related to naming a deal. So this one is when a new deal is created on my Asana billing pipeline, rename the deal. I really like having consistent naming conventions so that deals are easy to find. And when I look at a client's list of historical deals, they're very descriptive and I can see what each deal is about. So this one runs when a deal is created on my Asana subscriptions pipeline. And then the automation simply renames the deal, changes the deal title to the organization name colon and then Asana subscription. And it actually sets the revenue model to subscription as well. So if I do a quick example, let's go back to Warwick Palm, add a new deal. Now, by default, you can see the title of the deal is Minor Workshop Deal. This is, you've probably seen this before. It's just kind of the default title, which is not very, very good because it's not very descriptive. Now, if I put this on my Asana subscriptions pipeline, let's put it into contact made. Oh, I've got a required field, save that. And by the time I get to the deal, you can see it's been renamed to Minor Workshop colon Asana subscription. And actually, if you go to the change log, you can see and hear the automation renames the deal immediately. So this is a really nice way of making sure I'm using a consistent naming convention when I create deals on different pipelines. So that is a look at some of the automations that I use in my Pipedrive account. Now, as you can see with a lot of those examples, these automations are really just saving me a couple of clicks and a few seconds, but I'm saving small amounts of time that really add up. More than that, especially if I have automations that are creating activities, reminding us to book calls, creating a checklist of steps we need to follow next, it's actually a way of improving our process to make sure we don't make mistakes. I hope this video has given you some ideas of how automation can be used in your business. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.